Hey everybody, Thrift Store Hacker back again, and I'm working on a mass manufactured jumper and power box. And I have all the logos covered up, I don't want to get in trouble with anybody on YouTube, but I'll tell you, this product is actually really neat. Um, it comes with uh, several different things. You have your 12 volt power ports, and there's a big battery in the back. You can jump start your car off of it with the jumper cables. Um, it's got a USB port. It's got a this little light 120 volt inverter, which I can actually show you working here with the uh, this little lamp that I have. There you go. It'll even tell you your wattage draw up here. Right, this little bulb's pulling 17 watts, so about as much power as a compact fluorescent bulb. But the main reason why I'm fiddling around with it today is the battery is a, it's a good sized battery. I actually have the cover off, so I'll spin this around to show you. The battery is a sealed lead acid. It lays sideways. It goes almost the full depth of the uh, machine. And uh, I'm just looking for a way to either A, keep it charged up all the time so it can sit in the garage or sit in your car or something, and when you actually need it, it'll be charged. And I've come to two possible ideas. Um, oh, another feature it has on it, it's got a, uh, it's got an air blower for like blowing up an air mattress or a raft, and it's got a, a little uh, bicycle or tire pump on it too. As you can see, this flop, uh, flops out like that and charges, which is, Actually, kind of the weak point on this because these get wobbly and see how loose that one is already. And it doesn't like to accept uh, the plug and charge up correctly. But, as I said, we have the battery right here. We have a positive and we have a negative. This plate goes over the back of it when it's done or when it's set up. So, if I turn this back around. I can show you that if I hook up to this uh, one of the electric trike batteries here, which is 12 volt, it will power. It'll show you power. And if you turn on the jump start setting, it's going to create a connection between these two wires to the battery back there. So it's actually charging the battery. Um, if the battery was really low, it could damage the battery because you have a lot of amperage coming up from here. And especially after you start a car or something, you have the alternator's amperage coming into it too. So, it's kind of a quick and dirty way if you need to charge the battery in this or jumpstart your car. But if you want something with a little more longevity, I would not try that. So, let's hook these back up over here. So, I figured the easiest and cheapest way to go about putting a charging system on this where it could just sit there and stay charged and when you're whenever you need it, it's ready to go, would be to take it and put a solar panel on it. I've used this panel in several other videos. This is my little 10 watt solar panel. It's not going to do much. Like, you're not going to be able to run this all day with the solar panel on it. Uh, if you had a uh, 40 or a 50 watt solar panel hooked up to the back of this with a charge controller, you would be able to run it pretty indefinitely as long as you kept the uh, wattage draw really low on whatever devices you're using. Now, I figured the easiest way to do this would be to put the charge controller on the back, and we're using another one of those uh, cheapo online charge controllers. They've seemed to work fine for me in the past. This time I just mounted it right to the back of the uh, solar panel. As you can see, the leads from the solar panel are coming into the uh, charge controller, and then these are coming out on the battery side, these two leads, and they run down here to the wire that comes off the back, and then I have the wire run to a plug. Now this is a very antiquated plug. Uh, some of you might know what this is. This is an old uh, FM radio and TV antenna plug. I think they uh, were used in houses probably around the 1950s. But I had it in my box of extra stuff and it's a really nice plug. It's got really good connections on the other side. You got the positive and the negative right there. So I figured this would be the best candidate for a plug. 
That and if the wires break off the end here, it's got screws on it so you can fix it in the field. So let's find the back plate here. This is the back plate that I showed you. It goes onto the back of the uh, power setup. And if we just mount that right there, and then after we get it mounted, we run from these two screws right here, wires. We'll scoot this out of the way here. Let's spin this back around. We run the positive wire to the positive and the negative to the negative. Another thing I'll be installing is a fuse. I'm using an old uh, glass style fuse here, which we'll figure out where to put that just to make sure that like if the controller shorts out or something like that, uh, this fuse only has a two amp rating. Uh, the solar panel only pulls maybe at its best three quarters and uh, pushes about three quarters of an amp. So just to make sure if wires get crossed or something, we don't have a fire. We're going to put a fuse in there that will uh, essentially kill the whole solar charging setup if there's any uh, short circuit or problems. And then after we get our back cover back on here, we'll have our wires hooked up somehow and then that piece sitting right here on the back cover. Put that in there and we'll have that. That way you just plug your solar panel into the back of it. Grab my plug in here. Whenever you're not using it, you just grab your plug, plug it into the back of the uh, unit and set your uh, solar panel out in the sun. And as the uh, thing sits there, it charges up. And since we have the charge controller on the back of this, the battery won't overcharge itself and it will be ready indefinitely. That way, if you have a power outage, or if you uh, need to go jumpstart your car on a really cold morning, or, you know, any other variety of things, if you need to fill up your uh, bicycle tire or air up a raft. Now, with the storage size on the battery back there, I would say that's probably at least a 20 amp hour battery. And this is only a 10 watt solar panel, so it will take... If it was completely dead, it'll take the better part of three days to charge that thing all the way back up. Not counting the power this, the charge controller, is using to control the charge. But I think this is going to be an interesting setup, and I will revisit this after I get a little bit of use into it and get the plug installed and let you know how it works out. Um, I think this is going to work out pretty good, though, because we use this pack at work maybe... Uh, you know, once a month, twice a month, uh, take it out to a uh, market and we can sit out there and use the 12 volt ports or use these for our phone or iPad chargers or use the, uh, the, uh, USB port to charge our phones and stuff like that. And, you know, worst case scenario, if the, if the company car, uh, battery dies, we can jump start it with the, uh, jump pack. But big thing is, is keeping it alive and actually having it charged when you need it charged, which if anybody uses rechargeable anything, you know this is like the biggest problem that you can have with technology is you can never keep the batteries charged or you forget to put them on the charger and then they're essentially useless when you go out the door. So this should negate that and hopefully uh, provide a uh, good charging setup for years to come. Uh, I think the, the best idea to do with the solar panels, I'm probably going to take it and I'm going to mount it uh, in a window of the company car or something like that and uh, have it there all the time. And uh, it'll get, depending on where it's parked, a good amount of sun and it'll just keep the batteries charged up indefinitely. And there you go. Uh, if you guys like my channel, uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe. And until next time, build stuff and have fun.